This video is sponsored by DAP Canada. We are connecting with friends, adventuring into unknown places, flipping unknown items, building unknown things, all with the intention of ending up with an amazing thrifted DIY piece for my home. DIY friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Danny, and today's DIY in progress is going to be a fun thrift flip challenge. <laughs> it's featuring my friend Sam, the DIY huntress. Sam and I love to build together, and but because we both live in different countries, it's hard for us to get together. So we came up with a way to have a little fun with each other. We are both going to find each other a mystery thrifted item that we find on Facebook Marketplace that we will then have to go and pick up and flip. I have no idea what Sam is going to find for me, but she does know me well, so I have a feeling we are in for an interesting project. But of course, if you are new here, welcome. Feel free to hit that subscribe button and join this amazing DIY community. We do all things home and DIY, and sometimes we can get a bit weird, but we love weird here. So with that said, let's get thrifting. Editor, roll the tape. Boop. I miss you so much. I know. I just figured this is the next best thing. If we can't be together building, at least we can challenge each other and curse each other from different countries. So oh, I love this idea so much. I'm so excited. I'm ready for a good thrift flip. Let's do it. Okay, so just to reiterate, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna find you a piece off of Facebook Marketplace in your area, and you're gonna find me a piece off of Facebook Marketplace in my area, and then we're just gonna give each other a time, place, and how much, which I'm pretty sure we've given each other a budget of $100 max. Yeah, $100 works for me. Honestly, I'm just excited to do some shopping in your area. Like I know what's in my area because I'm on Facebook Marketplace like literally every day. So I'm excited to see what I can find for you. <laughs> but okay. Although every time you post something, I'm like, Danny has way better options than <laughs> we do well, here on Long Island. So good. We'll see about yeah. that. Okay, but tell me, so what are you looking for? Like what would be an idea? ideal thing for me to find you okay so i think no i know i need storage for either the workshop or i'm starting my office soon and so like something that i can basically just put probably paperwork in i don't know i just storage is a must in this house because it's so little and there's like no storage anywhere what about you because like i'm gonna have to do digging for you so i know that you have a lot of projects coming up too. I would say, you know, with my garage build currently happening right now, I think anything storage related for the garage would be awesome. Cause I don't plan to be in this room for very much longer. So I don't think adding storage in here makes sense. But yeah, I think something, find me something cool for the garage. I'm actually really excited to start shopping for you. Yeah, like, I feel you. like it's I don't know if it's gonna be easier or harder than shopping for myself, but I'm excited about it either way. So, so. This is gonna be a disaster. I just this know is it. Be great. This is gonna be amazing. Um, I'm gonna try to find something today that you have to go pick up tomorrow. So be ready. Be okay, I'm ready. I'm sure ready. That tomorrow works well. Okay, well, good luck. Let me know how it goes. I guess I'll know. And um, remember, nothing too big. Okay. Do you, do you see try. do you see these serious eyes? Danny, I know. I'm gonna try my best. Nothing too big. Good luck to you. Okay. Um Thank and you. uh I'll be sending you some coordinates and prices very soon. I can't tell if this is the best idea we've had yet or the worst idea we've had yet. Let's go. Definitely the best. Camera high five. <laughs> Happy thrifting! <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> Okay, well, I feel like that conversation went well. I basically have an idea of what Sam is looking for, whether that's being office organization or workshop organization. So um, I have my Facebook marketplace open here. So let's see what we can find. Oh, these wood shelves are nice. Okay, how much? 75 bucks. Let's see, 55, 50 height, 22.5 width, 12. Okay, that's great. I mean, that could work. Okay, I'm gonna ask if this is available. 
Hi, Melissa, is this still available? My friend can come pick it up. Oh my God, look at this vintage wicker frog waste basket. $80, oh my God. Um, that's adorable. Okay, that's obviously not helpful for the situation, but I think that I should convince Sam to buy that. Let's keep going. Ooh, velvet love seat sofa. That's so cool. But not, again, not what we needed. Also, that's in Brooklyn. I don't think we need that. I think we're gonna have to like think outside the box on this one. Something that you could turn into storage. Ooh, I kind of love this wood mail organizer sorter. I like the little slots in the little drawer. That could be fun in the shop because she could put all of her sandpaper in there. $25, not a bad price. This is cute. Okay, I'm gonna reach out to this person and see if it's available. Hi Bonnie, is this still available? I would love to come pick this up. Okay, let's keep scrolling. Let's see what else we got because we need backups. <gasps> What is this? A postal sorter, 75 bucks. <gasps> oh, this is amazing. Oh my God, look how many slots there are. Oh my God, how big is this? Measures four to six inches tall, 40 inches wide. 15 inches did, that's not bad. <gasps> oh, I like this. And just think like she could put all her sand, like organized sandpapers or even, it, well, if she puts it in the office, she can put paper in there. This would look so cool. And it's wood, which is great. So it's, you know, if she wants to change it or make it different, that's amazing. Hi there, is this still available? Oh, I love this one. Okay, I'm very happy. Okay, so I have reached out to two people, actually three people. We'll see what comes back. I'm going to conceal which one I end up going with because I feel like that will be a reason to go over to Sam's episode and check it out to find out which one I actually go with. But in the meantime, um, I guess I just wait for Sam to tell me where, when, and how much uh, to pick up my thrifted piece. So now we wait. I guess I'll go do something. Okay, friends, I am on my way to pick up this unknown object off Facebook Marketplace. Sam gave me a time, uh, how much I had to spend, the name of the person I was picking the item from, and she told me that I need the truck and I need somebody with me, so I have Jeffrey because I won't be able to move it alone. <laughs> But it's funny because Sam did ask me if I if I would be willing to spend more than our $100 limit. So she said it's going to be very useful. And I'm into that. I'm into that if it's going to be very useful, but it better be. I'm terrified. But anyway, let's get to location and let's see what it is. This oh, is the right place. Me too. Okay, so this guy just got in his truck and now he told us to follow him in his truck. I am officially terrified. <laughs> Oh, there's another dude. I'm gonna wave at him. Okay, I just waved. Oh, Sam, what did you get us into? Okay, he's looking. He's getting a shelf. Oh my god, it is a shelf. So good. This will we... be filled up with all kinds of stuff in no time. Oh yeah. <laughs> well that was a fun pickup. That was really random and kind of the strangest experience that I've ever had, not knowing what I'm gonna go pick up, but that this thing is so cool. I am so excited. I'm gonna have to text it. Sam, you're gonna watch this. This is a cool find. Cool find, Sam. Well, hello there. <laughs> Didn't see you there behind this giant cabinet. Well, I did tell Sam, find me something small and find me something wood. <laughs> Honestly, I think this piece is so dope. I, I understand why she picked this for me because she know that I was looking for like cool storage pieces for the garage space. So when she saw this, like me, I would have been like, oh my God, I have to have that. So I get it. And you know what, even if it's not made of wood, I have a couple ideas of what I want to do with this, which is going to incorporate wood, which is kind of cool. What is in here? Ugh, what did I just touch? I don't know how long that guy had this piece in his trailer, but it was a while. 
you could tell. Uh, let's get this cleaned up first and then we can start brainstorming what we can do with this piece. Woohoo! I'm ready to thrift flip! Yeah! <laughs> yeah! All right, so to get this rusty pile of love cleaned up, I decided the root of least resistance was to use my Ryobi cardless power cleaner. Oh man, friends, this thing is wicked and it's so much fun to use. Like, has anyone used this at home? Because if you're a furniture flipper, I highly recommend owning one of this. It has adjustable pressures, three nozzle head options, a hose adapter that lets you connect your hose to it, or you can just connect an adaptable bottle that you can fill with cleaning solution. And this thing also comes with a bunch of different cleaning heads for it. I am such a personal fan of this thing and just like look how it's blasting away all that icky dirt and debris. Is there nothing more satisfying to watch? Either way, big fan of this piece for furniture cleaning. I just wanted to throw it out there. Okay, well, welcome to the wood shop. <laughs> more like the wood tent. It's temporary. It's dingy. This is actually my paint tent, but I set this up in the backyard just to give myself a workspace because my she shack has been taken over for storage and my front yard is basically just garage, reno, demo. So this is my only place of serenity right now. But I have my sketchbook, I have my iPad, and what I wanna do is just start brainstorming a bunch of ideas. Now that I have it cleaned up, I don't really know what I wanna do with this yet. So I figured, whew, it is windy out. Dorothy, hold on to your Toto, cause we are flying away today. I don't really know what I wanna do with this piece, but I do know that I wanna incorporate some kind of wood element. So I'm gonna start sketching and see where I land and then we'll go from there. So let's start. Ooh. So let's get sketching. Okay, friends, I think I have a plan. I'm gonna show this to you. This was actually very challenging because this cubby was different from these two cubbies and these two cubbies were different from this cubby and these cubbies were different from these cubbies and these top cubbies were different from the rest of the cubbies. I know, but I was able to get all the measurements done. So I think I have a plan. So let me show you what I drew up. I love apothecary pieces, like anything. I love recreating faux apothecaries, real apothecaries. So why, won't, why wouldn't we create this, right? So what I wanna do is create a bunch of little cubbies and then add the little metal labels on the front of it for when I'm ready to actually organize this piece. Now, as we know, the cabinet is red. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go get it sandblasted, which means it's gonna basically remove any top coat layer on that metal and just bring it back to its bare bones. So I need to get this piece packed up in my truck. I'm gonna go take it to get sandblasted in the morning. And then tomorrow we will get started on making our cool apothecary boxes. So exciting. Good morning, friends. I wanna share my little arts and crafts project here that I did last night. Essentially, I was kind of worried about my box sizes, making sure that they were really gonna fit. Anytime that I feel worried about my sizing or any of my calculations, I just make a mock-up with foam board. Look at this. I made like a little mini version of what I wanna do. So I'll show you kind of what I'm thinking. This is a really poor sketch of my box here. So essentially I wanted to have a curve here that's going to be one inch. This one inch here that's curved back is gonna let me lift the piece up and lift it out. And then I have this flat section here that's going to have my little name tag to give it that apothecary look. And then, then this curves back just so it makes it a little bit easier to be able to get your hand in and out of getting items off of the shelf. Now this is a terrible drawing of this, but essentially I've worked out what the sizes need to be for the pieces here, all here, all here. Now the two middle pieces that were the bigger ones, I'm actually gonna do a full drawer. So this is just gonna be a piece that can come in and out. So essentially this is gonna go all the way to the top and then this will be like a full drawer that I can just pull out. Um, which will hold like, you know, bigger things that would need to be like more table topped. So I kind of like this idea that these two middle pieces will just be full and then the rest of them will kind of have this look. But it's nice because I tested it last night and this piece here sits right above the metal piece. So this is what you see in the front and then whatever items in there. So I think this is going to work out. 
Okay, in terms of next steps, I got a bunch of wood. So check this out. All of this wood, uh, this is half inch ply. This was left over from our garage build, which I'm kind of stoked about because I'm gonna use it up for this project. So hopefully, uh, you know, I can get through a lot of this before I actually have to go buy lumber. I don't really know how much I'm going to get through, but we'll see. So I'm going to do just basically start cutting all my pieces, see how far I get, and then decide what do I need to go buy from there. Um, it's very exciting. But with that said, we have a lot of cutting to do today. So grab your hot cold drinks, my friends, and uh, cue the montage. nine lovely cubbies some of these are a little bit rough i definitely like got better at making these and kind of found the flaws and the teeny tiny little things that made them a little bit better as i was going but that's to be expected but once we get to the sanding stage i think we're going to be just fine well sanding and wood fill stage this is it's just going to make these look amazing but now that i have all of these, I've proven my measurements, I've proven what I need to do. I can kind of just go cut everything for the rest of them and then start assembling uh, like a mad woman afterwards. So at this point, we just need to keep cutting wood, keep assembling the wood. And by the end of this day, hopefully we have a lot of boxes. <laughs> I, I'm speechless. I'm speechless. That was a marathon. That was literally eight hours of doing the same thing over and over again. That was intense, but we have a bunch of boxes around me all done. I can't believe it. Woo. La -da -da, la -da -da, it's a DIY day. Good morning, friends. It's going to be a great DIY day. Let me tell you. I'm still like flabbergasted at the fact that I was able to build 34 boxes in one day yesterday. I thought it was gonna take me at least two days. So I am feeling like superwoman. <gasps> and anywho, I was hoping to have the cabinet back this morning to be able to test fit all of the boxes, but unfortunately they didn't get to the cabinet yesterday. They're doing it right now. So I should be able to get it this afternoon, but I don't wanna wait. Um, I do wanna get started on these. So really we're just gonna trust that my math is superb and everything's gonna fit perfectly. 
All right, so our next steps then is to finish up these boxes. I was using a plywood that was a little bit icky. I mean, I was trying to save cost. We had this plywood lying around the house and why wouldn't I want to use it? But this plywood isn't that great. It has a lot of like icky edges. All of my cuts need to be fixed up. I really want this to have a professional looking finish, but that's why I'm excited because today's episode sponsor is Dab Canada and we are going to be using their three-in-one wood filler. This is a premium wood filler that has a wood filler, a grain filler, and it's a sealer coat all in one. This stuff is amazing and it's going to give this a really professional looking finish. So I'm excited to talk about it, but um, we have 34 boxes to get through. So I did bring in Holly to help me today because it's going to be a lot. We should probably get started. I'm going to need this. What makes this wood filler unique is that it comes white because this wood filler has a chameleon technology that allows you to mix it with stains and other pigments in its wet state so you can create an exact match to your wood. Thus, it's like a color changing chameleon. It's also sink, shrink and crack resistant. It's fast drying, easy to sand and easy to clean up with water. Now I'm planning to stain these boxes with a dark walnut, my fave stain. So I've mixed up my filler with the stain and I'm filling in these edges and when it dries, I'll sand it smooth. When I'm ready to stain, these icky edges are going to completely disappear and look super professional and awesome. Now, depending on what you want your final project to look like, this filler is also great at filling in the wood grain. So when you go to paint your piece, it leaves a really smooth appearance. Actually, if you saw my thrift flip transformation last week, this is a perfect example on how this wood filler was able to completely take away features from the cabinet door fronts, fill in unwanted gaps, and it left this piece with a smooth, flawless finish. You would never have known how these doors look beforehand. Now, if you don't need to stain, match, or fill in the wood grain, a great secondary wood fill option is the Wood Pro X All-Purpose Dry Dex with a dry time indicator built into it. It's pink and applies on pink, but it dries a natural color. If you're super impatient like me and you just never know how long to wait until the wood filler is dry, this takes away the guessing game because you just need to wait until it turns a natural color. This filler can also be sanded, cut into, drilled, screwed, or nailed, and is great for filling and repairing nail holes, gouges, cracks, and imperfections on any wood surface. It's also stainable and paintable, shrink, crack and crumble resistant, and low odor. If you wanna learn more about these two products, I have linked them in my description box, but uh, we only have 32 more boxes to go. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, friends, <laughs> that was the most intense day ever, but all of these are done minus, don't mind the insulation, long story. Uh, all of the boxes are stained. Overall, I think these stained up beautifully. Adding all the wood fill on the edges just made this 
I got word that the cabinet is ready to be picked up. So tomorrow morning, that is the first thing I'm gonna do. We're gonna have it here, then we're gonna prime it, paint it. We're gonna get a finish on all of these and then we'll put the little apothecary kind of name tags on this and this whole piece is gonna come together so well tomorrow. I'm like, I'm so stoked. This is a cool project. I'm excited to see how this looks at the end. So let's get to tomorrow so we can finish this. Woohoo! Good morning, friends. I spent my morning going to get our very fancy new sandblasted metal piece. Let me show it to you. <laughs> so good. <gasps> Look at this. Sandblasted. The guy said um, that because of the sandblasting, it was very hard because this metal here is so thin that it just it heats it up to like a very large amount and it can start to warp this. So he said he did have a, a hard time getting it. It's not perfect, but I was like, dude, you saved me so much time. This is amazing. I think it looks great. It feels really rough. Now I'm still going to put a primer on it. I, you know, uh, I was reading over the paint that I'm going to be coating this with and it did say that if it is sandblasted on a steel or iron It really does need a primer. So we are going to prime this We're going to do the right things because to not prime is a crime So I have this piece Holly and I are going to move it into the backyard and uh, There's Holly there. Hello, and uh, we're gonna get this piece in so let's do it. I'm stoked This is this is gonna be so fun, right? Yeah all right, let me get my gloves on and we'll do this. Woohoo! So I mentioned we're gonna need to put a primer coat on this bad boy. Although it feels really rough to the touch, we gotta make sure this is protected. So I have a special primer here. This isn't your regular primer. This is a type that's meant to bond to very tough surfaces like metal. So you really need to look out for a proper uh, primer because not every primer is right for this. Now, this is a water-based primer and I'm going to be coating it with an oil-based paint. It's okay if you do water base, then put oil on top, but you can't go the other way around. You can't do an oil based primer and then do a water based paint. Remember that. So let's get rolling and let's see how it goes. We're going Optimus Prime time. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> and primed. Now it's getting weird. So we're gonna paint this up. It's gonna be black, I know. I know, I just really love black furniture, but I do think that this with the wood accents is gonna look so good. So I have a rust paint. This is by Tremclad. It's a semi-gloss, so it's gonna be nice and durable. I didn't want like super glossy, but I figured if we went with a semi-gloss, it's still gonna have a little bit of a sheen, but not as much of a gloss. I also have the exact same paint in a spray. I figured this would be good to kind of get in all the little nooks and crannies a lot easier. So we're gonna roll the whole thing in this and then after we'll fill in all the gaps and any spots that we don't like with the spray paint. Hopefully this works out.
This looks amazing. I am just shook how well the paint and then the spray paint going in the little nooks and crannies. It was a perfect idea. It worked so well and this looks so good. Like it looks like I bought it brand new. It's amazing. I'm like, I can't believe what this looked like when I started. I'm just, this project is so much fun. Okay, let's go inside because I wanna show you what the next, whoop, hold on. I've laid out all of my little name tags here. Now I have two different sizes, unfortunately, and I don't have enough to do the whole thing cohesively. So I've kind of like laid it out. So the same ones are on a strip here, a strip here, and then we do these bigger, longer ones here, two small guys in the middle, and then we have long ones and then two small ones at the end. It doesn't look good, but I think once it's all there, it's gonna feel cohesive. So I'm using my pitcher as my guide here, and I'm just gonna be going through all of these boxes by sizes and then adding the corresponding tags to the box. This is the last time I'm going to have to do something 34 times. This video is just one big montage of a lot of things happening. So here we go. Let's get these tags on. Let's finish this out 34 times. officially finished all the boxes. Look how good they look. I'm so excited. This is definitely a great project. This is a feel good project. I can't wait. Are you guys ready to see the final? Well, we need to call Sam and we need to show her what we were able to do with this piece because I don't think she was expecting this. So I'm excited to see what she thinks. <laughs> Let's call Sam. Hi, how was your project? It was good. Honestly, this thing does not look like what it looked like when I bought it. I'm so excited to see it. Oh my God. I almost like called you concerned two days ago when I thought I was gonna like poke it and it was literally gonna fall over and just crumble into pieces. Was it really it, bad? It was so rickety, but it was good. I can't wait to show it to you. How did yours go? Uh, it went, I'm very excited to show you. It was not wood and it certainly was not small. Yeah, you know, and it certainly was like, Totally in budget, right? <laughs> yeah, not in my budget. Wasn't the size I asked for and it wasn't in the material I asked for. You nailed it. Crushed it. I think that was when you were like, I'm never collabing with this girl ever again. <laughs> You're lucky I like you. <laughs> okay, so who's first? You want me to go first? Yeah, go first, go first. I don't, for some reason, I feel nervous to show you what I did. By the way, I love the metal shelf. I think it's gonna look so good in the garage. Um, I'm so excited. I'm so excited too, because I did want storage and that's all I basically said to you, give me storage and you did that. So are you ready? Because I think, I think you're gonna like this style too. It's definitely my style, but you're gonna love it. All right, show me, show me, show me. Okay, I'm going, let's go. Okay, close your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready? On three. Okay. One, two, three. Shut the f up. Oh my god. <laughs> Danny, did you build all those boxes? 34 boxes! Oh my god, they're so good. Check it out. I did apothecary style. They're all made out of scrap plywood, may I add? that I cut individual boxes for. They actually have little angles. Like, are you proud of me? Every box has a little angle and a bottom. I don't know how I'm gonna organize it yet, so I haven't actually like put a, like a label on it. So what do you think? Wait, I'm obsessed with that and I want it in my house. Are you sure you wanna keep it? <laughs> Definitely, I'm gonna need this organization. Honestly, this was such a fun challenge because I never in a million years would have bought this for myself. So I'm so glad we did this. I'm so glad we did this. Yay! Oh, I'm so excited, you crushed it. Woohoo!
Oh my goodness. DIY friends, thank you so much for watching this thrift flip challenge. Now that you've seen my thrift flip, make sure you head over to Sam's channel to see what item I got for her and how she flipped her piece. Honestly, I am so so happy with this challenge. This piece is epic. It's gonna look so good in my garage. I don't even know how I'm gonna organize everything in this, but you guys should let me know. What do you think should go in here? How do you think I should organize it? Of course, a big thank you again to the sponsor of this episode, DAP Canada. If you wanna learn more about the wood fillers that I used in this episode, they are linked in my description box. And sending so much love to my Patreon family. You guys are amazing. Thank you for the consistent support. If you are looking for a community of other DIYers to root you on through your projects, or give you advice, or just a community of fun people, then go join my Patreon. It is linked in my description box. As always, my friends, stay positive, stay creative, and keep on DIYing. Bye-bye.